when you consider purchasing your first home one of the most crucial aspects that you should focus on is improving your credit score and in the next few minutes i will outline the most important steps that you should take uh, now in order for you to purchase your first home next year and here's the important part the tip number four i bet you haven't even heard about but it plays a significant role when it comes to building your credit score super super fast so make sure you stay until the end so why is this essential to improve your credit score? Well, if you live in Canada, your credit score affects so many aspects of your life, from job opportunities to renting a nice place to obtaining uh, a mortgage loan for your first purchase. And it's important to understand that the lenders wants to ensure that you're credit worthy and you're capable of making monthly payments. And the higher your credit score is, the more willing the lenders are to lend you money and the lower their interest rates will be. And if you consider it to be higher risk, then obviously you're going to get less money for the higher interest rate to offset those lenders risks. Hopefully that makes sense. Credit scores range anywhere between 300 and 900, with 900 being the highest. But what is considered to be a good credit score? Based on my personal experience, anything above 780 is considered to be an excellent credit score, while anything below 700 definitely requires some improvements. However, you don't need to have a credit score of 800 plus to access the best rates and lenders. Anything around 750-ish will suffice. And that brings me to tip number one. It's crucial to keep an eye on your credit score and credit history overall because mistakes can happen and they can be found sometimes on a credit report, which may lower your score. So if you do notice some kind of a mistake, make sure that you contact the borrower to rectify them immediately. Make sure also that you do have significant and sufficient evidence in hands in order for you to prove that. To check your credit score, you can use two main credit bureaus in Canada, which is Equifax and TransUnion. They do charge to generate those reports for you, but you can always use the BorrowWell and Credit Karma, which are free and they do provide very accurate scores, which are calculated by the previous two bureaus that I mentioned. And the best part is that checking your credit score, uh, your own credit score, as many times as you'd like, will not affect the credit rating. It only affects when the third party accesses it and we're going to talk about this later in this video um, how to avoid that as well okay now let's move on to tip number two to build or improve your credit score you first of all need to make sure that you're using the credit cards for your purchases this allows the creditors to track your spending habits as well as most importantly they will be able to see how quickly you can pay off your balances always make sure that you spend within your means and pay off the balances fully by the end of the month. The worst thing you can do is miss a payment. I'm sure you all know about this. Uh, not only it incurs a significant late payment fee, but it also negatively impacts on your credit score. And I'll give you an example. Missing just one payment uh, will drop your credit score by 85%. And also on top of that, the record of the missed payment will remain on your history for up to six years. To stay on top of the credit card payments, what helps me is obviously putting it on my calendar. I get a reminder about five days prior to the due date and I make sure I make that payment. If you are not able to make a full payment, try at least to make a minimum required that is indicated on the bank statement that they send you every single month. Uh, obviously, this is not recommended because you will still be paying those high interest rates up to 30%, but at least your credit score is not going to be affected. All right, moving on to the tip number three. Sometimes banks will send you the letter offering them to increase your credit limit. And it's important to know that this is best when the, the initiative comes from the bank rather than you asking for that because there is a difference. But if you happen to receive a letter like this in mail, I strongly recommend you accept this and here is why. A significant portion of your credit score depends on credit utilization. What is credit utilization? It's a percentage that reflects how well you manage your current debt. It compares the amount of credit available to you with the amount you're actually using. So ideally, your credit utilization should always be around 30% or less, and the lower it, the better. I'll give you an example. Let's say your credit card limit is $10,000 and uh, you're using around $3,000 per month. Your credit utilization is 30%, which is excellent. However, if you happen to 
spend $5,000 every single month with the same $10,000 credit limit, your credit utilization immediately rises to 50%, which exceeds the recommended 30%, which is not good. So if your credit utilization is above 30%, it is strongly recommended to bring it up to $17,000 in our case to make sure that your $5,000 spendings fall below the 30% credit utilization threshold. By doing this, you will improve your credit score significantly. All right, now let's talk about that tip number four that I mentioned earlier in this video. Um, making multiple credit card payments throughout the month can significantly boost your credit score. I recommend paying off your credit card balance as soon as possible, especially after making a large purchase. Let me give you an example and explain to you how that works. Suppose you have the $10,000 credit limit and you just spent $7,000 on the vacation. The purchase immediately reflects the 70% credit utilization. Most creditors report to credit bureaus only once a month, and if their report aligns with the time when you spend $7,000, waiting until the end of the month to pay off your the balance will show the high credit usage. This will make it seem like you're using more credit than you actually are, negatively impacting your credit score. But by making the multiple payments towards your credit card throughout the month, you basically increase the chances of the lender seeing the appropriate credit utilization, which ultimately helps your credit score. Moving on to the tip number five. Here's the little trick that you can do, but exercise that with caution and only proceed if you're skilled at managing your finances. Instead of having a single credit card uh, with a high credit utilization, consider spreading your spendings among two or three credit cards with the lower credit utilization. This um, approach can be beneficial, but only if you're responsible with payments and avoid overspending or making late payments. If you mishandle this strategy, obtaining additional credit cards will further harm your credit score. Let's discuss tip number six. Building your credit score takes time and it is crucial to start as early as possible. Additionally, keeping in mind that the longer you have the credit card, the better it is for you and for your credit history. For example, suppose you have a credit card for five years and it demonstrates that you've been a loyal customer, you've been um, you know, consistently making those timely monthly payments. And in this case, it positively affects your overall credit history. So canceling the card significantly reduces your total borrowed credit, increasing your credit utilization, which in turn harms your credit score. So if you no longer use a certain credit card, I would suggest just keeping this anyways, not not canceling this, and instead just you know use it every once in a while just to keep that credit score. Tip number seven, having different types of credit can also help improve your credit score, provided you manage them properly and avoid missing any payments. Simply having just one credit card won't benefit you as much as if you would be having a line of credit, uh, some kind of a furniture financing, maybe auto financing. So it's better to have a mix of different types of credit to expedite the process of building your credit score. When it comes to the home purchase, it's essential to consider the impact of the third party inquiries on your credit score. Remember how I mentioned earlier that checking your own credit score does not affect it? However, if you approach multiple lenders individually to explore um, mortgage loan options, each lender will make inquiries through the credit bureau separately, which can negatively uh, affect your credit score. Instead, I recommend seeing assistance from the mortgage broker who has access to a network of 65, 70 lenders at a time, and they can effectively manage this process and ensure that your credit score remains intact. I really hope that you found this information helpful. And if you do like the educational videos like that, please consider subscribing to my channel. Feel free to reach out to me directly. My contact information is always under every single video that I make. I'll be happy to assist you with any question that you may have, really stay related. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.